Hey everybody, this is Chris from Project Option, and in this video I want to talk about why calendar spreads are not long volatility trades. So if you're familiar with the long calendar spread, you know it's the combination of a short option and a long option at the same strike price but in different expiration cycles. Now the long calendar spread is often taught as a positive vega position, and positive vega positions are supposed to profit when implied volatility increases. Now in today's video, I'm going to do the unthinkable and prove to you why calendar spreads can actually lose money when implied volatility increases, and how they can actually make money when implied volatility decreases. So before we get into the good stuff, let's go ahead and define what a calendar spread is. So in this video, we're going to focus on the long calendar spread. So a long calendar spread is a strategy consisting of selling a near-term option while also buying a longer-term option at the same strike price. Now calendar spreads can be constructed with all calls or all puts. So an example would be selling a 100 call and then also buying a 100 call in a further expiration cycle. Now the same position can be constructed with puts, you just swap out the calls for puts. Now a long calendar spread has two primary profit drivers which can be explained by the positions Greeks right when you enter the trade. So long calendar spreads have positive vega and positive vega. Now this means that they profit from the passage of time when the stock price is near the calendar's strike price, and that's because as time passes, the short option's extrinsic value will decrease faster than the long option's extrinsic value, generating profits for a long calendar spread position. So since you're short a near-term option and long a longer-term option, that short option is losing value faster than the longer-term option, and that generates profits for you as a long calendar spread trader. Now the second profit driver comes from the spread's positive vega value. Now positive vega means the spread should profit from an increase in implied volatility, and that's because the longer term option has a higher vega value or more volatility exposure than the near term option, which means the long option should gain more value than the short option when implied volatility increases. So let's go ahead and look at a hypothetical long calendar spread trade and look at its Greek exposures to try and figure out how the spread should profit. All right, so in this example trade, we're gonna look at a long calendar spread on SPX. Now that's the S&P 500 index. Now these particular option prices are from February 13th, 2017, when SPX was trading for 23.28.25. So the particular position we're gonna look at is the long 23.25 put calendar spread using March and April options. So we're short the 23.25 put in March, and we're long the 2325 put in April. So the short 2325 put has an IV of 9.66%, while the long 2325 put has an implied volatility of 10.49%. Now when we look at the theta values for the short and long options, we can see that the short put has a theta value of positive 40 cents, while the long option has a theta of negative 29 cents. Now that gives us a net theta exposure of positive 11 cents. Now that means with each day that passes, if SPX does not change value or implied volatility does not increase or decrease, then we should profit by 11 cents per day, which translates to an actual dollar amount of $11 of profit per day. Now if we look at the Vega values, we can see that the short put has a Vega value of negative 274. Now that means if that short put's implied volatility increases by 1%, then the option price is expected to be $2.74 higher, and since we're short that option, that increase in the price will yield a, a loss for us of $2.74. Now if we look at the long 23.25 put, we can see that the Vega value of that option is plus 396. So if that option's implied volatility increases by 1%, we're going to make $3.96 because that option should increase by $3.96. So if both of these options experience a 1% increase in implied volatility, we're expected to lose $2.74 on the short option and gain $3.96 on the long option, which gives us a net profit of $1.22 per 1% increase in implied volatility. But there's a problem. The problem is that implied volatility or option prices with varying amounts of time until expiration do not have the same sensitivity. Now near term option prices tend to be much more sensitive than long term option prices 
which we can see on the chart on the right. So the chart on the right is showing us the 9-day, 30-day, 90-day, and 6-9 to nine month implied volatilities of S SPX options. So S&P 500 index options. So as we can see here, in an event that causes implied volatility to increase, we can see that the 9-day option prices increase the most, while the 6-9 to nine month options do not increase as much as any of the other shorter time periods. So what this tells us is that in an event where implied volatility increases, we can expect near-term implied volatility to increase substantially more than long-term implied volatility. Now, what that means for a long calendar spread is that that short option might increase in price faster than the long option, which means that a implied volatility increase could actually lead to losses when you own a calendar spread. Now, on the other hand, that means if you enter a long calendar spread in an extremely high implied volatility environment, that means that if that short option decreases in value faster than that long option, you can actually make money from the implied volatility contraction. So we're going to look at an example of where a huge volatility increase occurs, but the calendar spread does not make that much money. And then we're also going to look at an example where implied volatility decreases, but a calendar spread still profits. So let's get into those examples right now. All right, so the first example we're going to look at is a long put calendar through a market correction. Now, for this example, we're going to buy, we're going to hypothetically buy a long put calendar spread with a strike price well below the market's current price, and we're going to see what happens when the market crashes to that calendar strike price and implied volatility increases. So, the first date we're looking at is August 20th, 2015. And we're looking at buying the 1970 SPX put calendar using the September and October expiration cycles. So that means we're going to be selling the September 1970 put and buying the October 1970 put. And our initial vega of the spread is positive 95 cents, and our initial delta is negative 4 cents. So for each 1% increase in implied volatility, we're expected to make $95. And for each $1 decrease in SPX, we're expected to make $4. So on August 20th, 2015, SPX closed at 2035.73. Now the short puts implied volatility was 20.2%, and the long puts implied volatility was 18.8%, and this calendar spread was trading for $13.20. Now on August 21st, 2015, the market had dropped $64.84, closing at a value of $19.70.89. Now that short puts implied volatility increased to 23.4% for a 3.2% increase, while the long puts implied volatility increased to 20, 21% for a 2.2% increase. Now, all the while, the calendar spread's price increased to $14.35 for a $1.15 gain. So you might be thinking, what are you talking about, Chris? The market crashed, implied volatility increased, but the spread made money, so it worked out exactly how it should. Well, if we actually break down the numbers, we can actually see that most of this profit, most of the profits from this calendar spread came from the directional move and not the implied volatility increase. So let's go ahead and break down the spread's volatility-based profits by multiplying each option's vega by the number of points that implied volatility increased by. So our short September 1970 put started with a vega value of $1.99. Now implied volatility increased by 3.2 points through that directional move, so that gives us a estimated $6.37 increase in the option price simply from the increase in implied volatility. So we get that by taking $1.99 of vega times a 3.2 point increase in implied volatility, and that gives us positive $6.37. So from that implied volatility increase, that option price increased by $6.37. Now the long October 1970 put had a vega of $2.94, and that option's implied volatility increased by 2.2 points. So $2.94 times 2.2 gives us plus six dollars and forty seven cents so since this long calendar spread is constructed by selling the 1970 put in September and buying the 1970 put in October 
that $6.37 increase on the short option actually represents a $6.37 loss on our position. However, that long 1970 put increased by $6.47, and since we own that option, that means we made $6.47 on that option. So our net gain from the implied volatility change in this case is the $6.47 gain on the long option minus the $6.37 loss on the short option, which comes out to a net profit of $0.10. Cents. So what we learn here is that even though implied volatility increased, this calendar spread actually didn't make that much money from the volatility change itself, and that's because the short options implied volatility increased at a greater rate than the long options implied volatility, and therefore the loss on the short option from the implied volatility increase pretty much offset the benefit of the implied volatility increase in the long option. Alright, now let's look at an example where a long calendar spread actually profits from a decrease in implied volatility. So this time we're looking at a long 1860 SPX call calendar on January 20th and 22nd. Now we're initiating this call calendar in the February and March expiration cycles. So we're selling the 1860 call in the February 2016 cycle and we're buying the 1860 call in the March 2016 expiration cycle. Now on January 20th, this spread had a, an initial Vega value of positive 83 cents. Now that means that if implied volatility increases by 1% in both options, then the spread should make 83 cents or $83 per 1% increase. Now the initial delta is wrapped right around zero, which means any, any profits that this spread realizes is going to be from a change in implied volatility since we're only looking at the spread over a two-day period. So on January 20th, 2016, SPX closed at 1859.33. Now on that day, the short call's implied volatility was trading at 23.5% and the long call's implied volatility was trading at 22.5% and the calendar spread is trading for a net debit of $15. Now on January 22nd, 2016, the market closed at 1906.90 for a $47.57 gain. Now the short calls implied volatility fell to 21.2% for a 2.3% decrease, and the long calls implied volatility also fell to 21.2% for a 1.3% decrease. Now, from that directional move and implied volatility contraction, the calendar spread's price increased by 55 cents. So even though the stock price moved away from our calendar strike price and implied volatility decreased, this spread made money. So let's go ahead and break down the numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and break down the spread's volatility-based profits by multiplying each option's vega by the percentage change in implied volatility. Because remember, an options vega represents how much that options price is expected to change with each 1% change in implied volatility. So that short 1860 call had an initial vega of positive $2.12. And since that options implied volatility decreased by 2.3 percentage points, we get a estimated option price decrease of $4.88. $4 so $2.12 times negative 2.3 comes out to negative 4.88. Now that long 1860 call had an initial vega of $2.95, and since its implied volatility decreased by 1.3 percentage points, we have an estimated option price decrease of $3.84. So $2.95 times negative 1.3 gives us negative 3.84. So since we're short the February 1860 call and long the March 1860 call, that $4.88 decrease in the short call actually generates a profit of $4.88 for us. And since we're long the 1860 call in March, that $3.84 decrease actually hurts us by $3.84. So our net profit from the volatility contraction in this case is the $4.88 profit on the February 1860 call minus the $3.84 loss on the March 1860 call, which comes out to a net profit of $1.04. So from the implied volatility change in this case, 
we actually profited as the implied volatility of each option decreased. Now that's because the short options implied volatility decreased more than the long options implied volatility and that just means that the short options value fell faster than the long options value and therefore we made money as implied volatility contracted. Now since the spread only made 55 cents overall that means that we didn't keep all of the volatility based gains from the implied volatility contraction and that's because the stock price did make a large movement away from our calendar's strike price of 1860 and that means we started to take on some directional losses that offset the profits from the implied volatility contraction. Either way, the spread did still increase and we still made money on a long calendar spread through an implied volatility contraction. Now to sum up what this video has discussed, a long calendar spread has positive theta and positive vega, meaning the spread profits from the passage of time and increases in implied volatility, but that's only if both options experience the same increase in implied volatility. So if you have a calendar spread with a vega value of plus $1, that plus one dollar only is accurate if both options experience a one percent increase in implied volatility. Now though a long calendar spread has positive vega, losses can actually occur from implied volatility increases as near-term implied volatility typically rises faster than long-term implied volatility. In the same vein, long calendar spreads can actually profit from falling implied volatility as near-term implied volatility typically falls faster than longer-term implied volatility. So what this all means is that even though a long calendar spread's vega value is positive, you need to be smarter than that vega value because both of those options are in different expiration cycles, which means they are prone to different changes in implied volatility. And as we've discussed, near-term implied volatility tends to be much more sensitive than longer-term implied volatility. So you actually can lose money if implied volatility increases, and you can actually make money if implied volatility decreases. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you'd like to receive all of our video content as it comes out, please click on that subscribe button on the bottom left. And if you want to check out some more videos, go ahead and click the playlist video on the right side.